All right, YouTube, what is going on, guys? How are you doing? Welcome back to another video on the David Hammond Visuals YouTube channel. Now, I know this looks extremely different because I'm holding the camera. I'm not sitting in my normal position, which I know is completely messy. My room is a mess right now. But, guys, that is because today we are doing a full day of shooting. I believe that's what I titled it. And this is going to be fun. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be an adventure. And uh, I want, going into 2020, I want more videos like this, more behind the scene videos, and just really showing you guys um, the gear I use, how I use it really just the behind the scenes of how I achieve the photos and or videos that you guys see me talk about here so with that said we're going to a place uh, in Hamilton it's about an hour and a half away I'm going with a buddy we're going to a few waterfalls it's gonna be really sick and that is because outside it is actually really warm out so all the snow is melted because today it's like eight nine degrees so we're gonna maximize that and run it the waterfall should be flowing because obviously uh, the snow has been melted um, so yeah going into this guys it'll be a bit of a longer video because I really want to show you everything I'm gonna show you guys the bags I'm using the gear and because I'm about to pick them up in like 15 minutes so I'll show you guys the bags all right so for bags okay this is very important your camera bag going into a shoot this is massive normally um, well first and foremost guys I own quite a few camera bags when you're a photographer videographer you will be begin to collect bags so I maybe have about four or five and I actually recommend you have different camera bags for different occasions based on the size and the gear needed that may sound a little silly but anyways so I have two main camera bags the brand I use and I know my room is messy the brand I use is called Langley okay um, personally I love them you don't need to get this brand I'm not saying it's the best but it's what I use they have two bags two main ones the first one is my simple camera bag, okay? Now this is kind of like my, my everyday go-to if I'm going to the city, downtown, maybe a small shoot outdoors, et cetera, et cetera. It's great. But today, I believe because this is going to be a big shoot, I'm bringing quite a bit of gear, I have my big boy. So this is an Alpha Pro. That's what it's called, the Langley Alpha Pro. Uh, benefits to this, it has a lot more support. You can hook it around your chest. The straps are gonna be a lot bigger. There's tons more room. I can hold my tripod at the bottom. There's a tripod mount there as well as I put my gimbal and things like that. Where this, I'm kind of uh, sacrificed or left to either bring in just my tripod or my gimbal because of the compartment in here, which I'm gonna wanna bring both. So we're bringing the Alpha Pro. That's my gear of choice bag. And uh, yeah, let's get that packed and get going. All right, so we're just about to head out now. The bag is all packed. There are uh, one last kind of thing, or one or two things, and that is clothing, or the articles of clothing that you are going to wear. So the first one, guys, is layers, okay? Because the weather is changing, it's kind of cold, but then it's kind of hot, because you're moving around, or maybe you're staying stationary, you want to be in layers. So right here, I have a t-shirt, I have a sweater, and then I have my jean jacket, all right? So what I can do is I can take off the sweater, I can wrap the jean jacket around my waist um, based on if I'm moving or not. And then the next thing after the jacket is boots. Okay, boots is essential, this is massive, and this is actually part of the reason why I wasn't going out outdoors too often. This is actually like the first time I'm going outdoors in like a couple of months, like a serious shoot. So, and that's because look, I would normally have these little tiny baby Converse, but finally for Christmas, we picked up a pair of combat boots. This is essential, guys, and get this at that's just Andrew. You can get this at any place. This, I choose to get it at Aldo. It's really cheap there. Like this, I think, like a good pair of boots that'll last you at least a year. You're looking at around 100 bucks Canadian, which is awesome. This is my third pair of combat boots. I've been doing this a while. So I just got those a few days ago. Stoked. Jacket, boots, we're ready to go. Let's now pick up Lewis. And all right, guys, we're here at Lewis's house. There he is in the back, just putting his gear. Lewis, say what's up. Yo, what's up, man? <laughs> Yo, what's up, man? By the way, I'm not live free visuals anymore. Oh, what's the name? I am Beyond the Lens. Oh, I like that. That's a lot cleaner. Is it? That, that wasn't taken. Is there like an underscore or something? Yeah, there's a lot of. Oh, okay. I was gonna say that sounds like <laughs> there's you're a lot of underscores. Anyways, yeah, Lewis and I, guys, have you seen on the other channel? We had we did vlogs together. Anyways, he's a photographer, videographer, so we're gonna head to we about an hour drive or so to. Uh, you haven't been to Hamilton, eh? The Falls? No, this is my first time. Let's get it, boy! This is my first time to Hamilton Falls. It's been a long time since <laughs> I like, this trip has been planned. Right? It actually has. Like the first time we met, like a year ago, we were like, bro, the first thing we do is Hamilton, and uh, now's the day. So we'll see you guys there. And guys, all right, we are here at Sherman Falls. Um, I have made so many vlogs and videos out here, but not on this channel, so I'm a little kind of like, my mind's in two different places. Anyways, this is a beautiful place out in Hamilton, around an hour and a half drive from where I live, just outside Toronto in Pickering, and uh, it's a beautiful area. Lewis is just back there setting up his stuff. And yeah, I'm just gonna show you guys the premise of the reason I came out here was for one, outdoor photography. I'm a huge outdoor photographer, I guess you could say, and uh, video, you guys know the deal. And I really wanna show you just, <clears throat> behind the scenes practical stuff of how I do it. So, we have the fall, we're by ourselves. Let's, right there. You can't really see, so let's get there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Woo. 
All right, so we have made it. We're here at the fall. Lewis is way down there. You can see him. Beautiful. Let's start off with some video. I got the gimbal. Let's bring that out, get a B-roll clip, and then after that, we'll do some photos, and I'll show you guys a little behind the scenes of how I achieved that. So, video. Hope you guys enjoy this. Let's get it going. And right guys, that B-roll clip is done. Still here with, where'd he go? Lewis finished that. It was a little sketchy getting up to the top one, but we did it. Anyways, now that that's done the video, I'm now gonna get some photos. You thought we'd be done, but I actually brought the film camera after all, so I'm gonna get some film shots and then some digital shots, maybe pull up the tripod, get some long exposures, and things like that. So let's get some film photos going. All right, three, two, Click, crank, boom. Now let's get some digital shots. And guys, all right, we are done at Sherman Falls. It was fun. Uh, got some film shots, which I don't know if I was able to put up because obviously you guys know I have to get those developed and that takes a while. Maybe they're up, I doubt it, but uh, I will show you guys soon if you're following the Instagram page, David Hammond Visuals. We've got some digital shots, uh, the long exposures, I'll put those up. Not too stoked on the photos, to be honest, guys. It's nothing too crazy. I've shot at that place many, many times. The video, though, I, I am pretty stoked about that. I believe that turned out well. Anyways, though, where I'm now gonna be doing photos for, for good, I guess you'd call it. We're at the second location. This is called Princess Falls, but we're not here for the falls. We are here, still with Lewis, by the way. We are here for the uh, for the overlook. I don't know if you guys can see if there are a ton of lights. There's this massive cliff, like overlooking all of Hamilton. And uh, we wanted to come at this time where it's dark, blue hour, where the sun has just set, so we can get those lights and get some long exposures and things like that. And then maybe depending on the time, we might go to a third location, which is Devil's Punch Bowl. When it's like pitch black, there's a massive cross that is completely, completely lit up, but I don't know if we're gonna go there. So let's uh, do this first. All right, so we're at the first location. It's all right. I don't think this is gonna be the one. There's a higher one up there, which I think we're gonna go. I just, I want, I want to see more, to be honest, but, uh, it is pretty cool. So let's go to the higher location. All right, so we're at the second place. This place is a lot better. We're a lot higher, maybe at least like 20, 30 feet. Um, we were normally down there, but now we're up here. Thanks Lewis for being my light post. And you have, here, just turn off the light or just like put it away for a sec. We have all of this view of Hamilton. So, like, like, yo, literally everything. So what we're gonna do, all right, Mr. Light. <laughs> we are going to, I'm gonna get the tripod, get some long exposures, really utilizing a lot of depth there. I might get the zoom lens on for some compression. Should look really sick, so I'll get some behind the scenes, and then maybe we'll think about that third place. Let's get this going. All right, here we go. So, we have 13 second exposure, eight aperture, 100 ISO, touch screen, enable. Okay, good. So take a good look, guys, at this, and then at the camera. 13 seconds, this is what it can do, okay? Three, two, one. And guys, that is it. That's how we do long exposures. Beautiful little thing to do when you don't have a lot of light because the long exposure with the shutter is absorbing as much light as possible. So awesome with uh, trails too. So we'll see you guys in the next shot. What's up, boy? And right, guys, I know this is not necessarily photography or videography related, but we are finishing off with burritos, mucho. You guys know what's up. If you watch the other channel, the personal one, you guys know this is the post, just post anything, post workout, post shoot, anything physically active or demanding burrito, okay? Got the man, Lewis, what's up? Mucho size burritos, <laughs> let's get it. Muck this, put a time lapse up, and then I'll see you guys tomorrow. I'll most likely do something with editing the photos and or videos, and uh, yeah, should be good. So, see you tomorrow. 
And all right, guys, what is going on? It is the next day, or actually two days later. I've been uh, editing up the photos and the video, and they are pretty much all done. So in this, I want to do a little screen recording and just show you guys a little behind the scenes on how I edited the photos you guys saw in the vlog. So hope you guys dig this little composition laptop. We have the uh, boom pole with the mic. This is what it actually looks like above me, but you know, we're changing it up. All right, guys, so with that said, let's jump into it. Screen recording on a Lightroom. Now, I, I you know, I took quite a bit of photos not too many not as many as i would like to be honest and that's just because guys you know with these photo video trips you never really know what's gonna be you know the predominant factor like you don't really know are you gonna go for video you're gonna go for photo sometimes you initially think you're going for photo but it's for video yada yada so um, I got one long exposure shot that I explained to you guys on the tripod, the digital shot, and it's right here. Um, I really like it, the way it looks, super clean, super basic, nothing too crazy. Um, the exposure or the time on here, so ISO was 200, it was that shot at uh, 11 millimeters, it was f11, and it was one second long, okay? Now, you guys may think, I didn't really explain too much when I was uh, shooting it. You know, as far as the exposures go with waterfalls or long exposures, initially you may think like, oh, you know, you're going to want five seconds or 10 seconds. You want it to be as long as it can possibly be. And that can be the case. But you guys need to keep in mind with the water, it moves pretty quick. So even one second or half a second, it, you will get a pretty milky, creamy looking um, shot. So this was only one second. And because of that, I don't have to change my, my other settings too much. I did use an ND filter for with this. But um, yeah, that, that's not, you know, that's besides the point. But that is for the first shot. The next shot here. Um, yeah, so it was kind of cool. It was of this girl. She was just like chilling. I guess her boyfriend was taking a shot and I was like, oh, all right, bet I'm going to use you as a, uh, as a focal point. So she was kind of just chilling, doing her thing. I did not get a long exposure with this. And uh, yeah, a little just quick tip for you guys to make a shot more interesting instantly is to utilize your foreground. Okay. So to utilize depth, which is what I always preach to you guys. So if you notice in the photo beforehand, there was foreground and background, right? So right here you can really see a nice creamy beautiful foreground and i love this little swirly puddle thing that you guys saw in the video it was just kind of like you know it was going in circles so this was a heavy on the foreground and then the waterfall was on the background where for this i used the foreground as this nice rock and then the background was the waterfall in her she was kind of like in a nice pocket um, where there was no water which was kind of nice um, the third photo is of Lewis here. He is taking the photo of the waterfall. And now for this one, I want much moodier. So I, I went a little fancy, which I usually don't do just because I thought it was a little boring. I'm not going to lie. So, you know, did a bit on like split toning and things like that, changed the hue, saturation curves, gave it a good S curve. And uh, you can, you can, you can, I was just honestly just playing around with it. It's nothing too crazy there. Um, but yeah, just you know it is what it is nothing too crazy um lewis then took this shot of me here <laughs> again nothing crazy i didn't really go ham on that um just me chilling he took one more here and now the real ones that i want to show you guys are the long exposures at princess falls so overlooking the you know the pathway or whatever it is those ones i went pretty ham on and i'm uh, i'm pretty stoked on so let's show them there were four my favorite ones at the end okay so let's let it load so the first one we have here all right i'm just going to show you all of them so that's one that is let it render that is two this is ba, 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 ba. there we go that's three and number four where i went i just positioned a little bit to the left and boom so this is my favorite one right here now i'll kind of explain the gist of it okay now real quick here's a before and after before after before after so i did edit this pretty heavily which i usually don't do i'm very minimal when it comes to my editing as you saw with the other ones besides that lewis photo and um yeah so so what did i do in a nutshell to achieve the look i did okay so first and foremost guys with long exposures you actually are going to do quite a bit of editing believe it or not it's just the nature of long exposures you know usually it's underexposed or it's too bright or there's a massive contrast so the first thing i did was i brought up the exposure you can see here up 80 percent okay the next thing i played around with the highlights i wanted to bring the highlights a little down because the light trails were a little too overexposed brought up the shadows because everything was dark you see what i'm saying like long exposures are one of these shots that you just you are going to play you're going to tinker around a little bit and that's okay whites i brought that up to bring more of a contrast i left the blacks um clarity i brought up a little bit saturation i want to bring up the colors um i changed a little bit with the hues and stuff i want to give it much more um of a and i'm actually going to show you kind of like the secret the finishing touches i put on here i'll leave that to the end um for the hues i brought it a bit more to the um the teal side and not necessarily because i'm a huge fan of the teal and orange look but i wanted a much more 
blue think of like metropolis look like um what came to mind when editing these photos was i don't know if you guys ever played the game bioshock um like rapture the city which is like an underwater city which like looks like really creepy and blue and just like almost futuristic looking so that's what i was trying to achieve so i gave it a bit more of that kind of uh teal cooler look because it was actually much warmer oh and that actually reminds me um i actually changed the white balance in my camera because this shot would not have looked this blue it was actually like super orange so i changed it to just a cooler setting in my camera so i could achieve that which is a little thing you guys can do if you want if you're not you know you don't like the way it looks i didn't really change anything down here again i'm pretty minimal i didn't do any split toning oh i did a bit of here um which again was just furthering the teal and orange really just that that bluish look so here's before and after before after before after so you can really see it in the sky and now the main thing that i did to really make this photo pop the best it could because do i love it it's not crazy like this is not definitely the best long exposure i've taken but like for what it is it's all right um this year guys the gra gradient or graduated filter tool okay this thing here did uh did quite a bit all right so what you can do here is this is just like it sounds it's for it's a gradient filter graduated filter where if you want to edit just like one point or part of the photo this can do it so i put it right where the sky was and what i did was i boosted up the clarity a ton to really make the sky pop and i brought down the temperature okay this is massive so here's a before and after of just the gradient filter okay so look at this i'm gonna delete it and then i'll bring it back actually hold up here, look, I'll take away the clarity. See, look how crap that looks. It just looks like a flat puffball where the clarity pop. It just makes it pop. It makes it look super vibrant. And then look at the temperature, okay? That's like, look how ugly that looked. It just looked kind of pinky, nasty, where if you bring it back, it's much more metropolis or, or rapture-like. Does that make sense? That's kind of what I was going for. So again, clarity, this is what I usually do for long exposures for the sky before and after it can really make it pop that's a quick tip for you guys and then if you want to change the white balance etc etc so that is what i did for ideally all four of the photos they're pretty much the exact same things just that very slight difference um compositions this was a little bit wider i definitely do like it it's a, it's a dope shot like i definitely like the way they turned out um the timing on this was around eight seconds so anywhere from six to eight seconds nothing too crazy or too long and um yeah it's cool man as far as the composition goes we have the foreground of the uh light trails and then the background of the city it just looks very it almost looks very like eerie and futuristic which which i do like about it so i'm stoked about that and then i got a couple other shots that lewis took of me which i'm <laughs> not too stoked on so i won't show you guys that but that is it guys as far as the um uh, the video goes. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I'll, I'll leave this or I'll make this the outro now. It was an awesome day, a full day of shooting, if that's what I titled it. I'm going to be doing tons more of these guys, and I've already made tons, but they're on my other channel. So if you guys want to check out other ones like this, you can check out the David Hammond channel. But as far as this channel goes, I'm going to be making tons more, super high quality, and uh, really resourceful and valuable to you guys. That's the whole intent or goal for this. So hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe, comment, all that stuff. And guys, as always, you can check out the free photo course, okay? The free photo video course i should say where it takes one section out of my six mega courses and puts it into a free half an hour course for you guys so if you guys are interested in outdoor photography outdoor videography commercials short films music videos or um, documentaries you can check out the free course um, two courses though if you are interested afterwards that i recommend is the outdoor photography and outdoor videography courses that's what primarily this vlog was was on so that's that i'll finish there there also is coaching one-on-one -on -one photo video coaching if you guys are interested always link down below i would love to help you guys on a more personal level so that is it thanks guys much love i'll talk to you in the next one with that see you then peace